Hello again, everybody. So <laughs> I just had to make this video and I know I do a lot of response videos to the YouTuber Riley Dennis. I'm trying not to do so, but she's just such an idiot sometimes when it comes to her content that it's just hard not to reply to it. So I have my rum and coke with the two finger rule of rum and I'm going to have a response video because I'm sure this is going to be super duper. Let's begin. <laughs> the video here, which I got redirected by Blair White, um, your dating preferences are discriminatory. Already, this is going to be a great video. Hit it, Riley. Would you date someone who's trans? I get mistaken as transsexual all the time, so sure. Would you date someone who's black? Oh, I have. Would you date someone who's fat? I have. A bigger girl. Would you date someone who's disabled? I dated a guy who had epilepsy who dropped twice in my presence. Yeah. Now, honestly, I don't know what your answer is to those questions, but I've met a surprising number of people who would say no to all or at least some of them. And they have the right to, Riley. Who cares? It's not your life. It doesn't affect you, does it? Their argument is that it's just a preference and that you can't control who you're attracted to. Spoiler, it's not a preference. Whatever happened to the idea that beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Like. I think most of the time that this is brought up, it's in regards to race. No, it's not just about race, Riley. It's about uh, aesthetic looks, it's about personality, it's about uh, resources, what one partner can provide for the other if a partnership does occur. I mean, women are like this all the time. They want a man who's stable, who's uh, non-abusive, uh, who will listen to them and cater to their needs because everybody wants to feel wanted. It's the same thing with men. I mean. Men, uh, both in straight and gay relationships, they want something out of a relationship. I'll link to a couple really good videos in the description about racial dating preferences, but in this video, I want to talk about our other biases. Let's start with trans people. Would you date a trans person? Yeah, I probably would, but not a trans person like you. Honestly, think about it for a second. Okay, got your answer? Thought about it. Still would. Well, if you said no, I'm sorry, but that's pretty discriminatory. Are you serious? If people who are heterosexual don't find attraction to trans people who are transitioning between male and female, female to male, that's okay. Like there's no, there's no problem with it. Riley, let me guess, because you're a trans person and people who don't want to sleep with you or start a relationship with you, everybody's out to get you. Is that right? Everyone, everyone. <laughs> is a fucking asshole. Riley, except you. Oh my god. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you're a horrible person who hates trans people. Yeah, but you're sure acting like it, aren't you? There was probably a time in my life when I said I wouldn't date a trans person, but since then I've thought critically about it and changed my mind. Oh my god, and you're so much better than the rest of us poor schmooz. Thank you. Thank you for telling us how much we suck. I could sit here and show you photos of conventionally attractive trans people. There are definitely trans people who you would never know are trans unless they told you because they pass for cis. And so what? I'm an androgynous person. Some days I look more mannish, some days I look more like a girl. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Jesus, why are you making this an issue? And that might convince some of you, but I think arguing that you would only like a trans person if you didn't know they were trans is a poor argument. I think you could be attracted to any trans person, whether they pass or not. And you don't speak for all trans people, Riley. You only speak for yourself. And right now, you are causing me to drink the stupidity away. Ugh, I'm gonna become an alcoholic because of you. I think the main concern that people have in regards to dating a trans person is that they won't have the genitals that they expect. Exactly. If a straight man likes pussy and he starts dating a girl who he thinks is a girl and surprise, there's a penis down there, yeah, that's gonna cause a lot of awkward, embarrassing moments, won't it? It's when you think something of somebody, all right, and they come off as a female, let's say, you're expecting them to have the biological sex and the feministic traits of a woman, right? So when you get down and dirty with them, and then all of a sudden, boing, this comes up, like, w w like what is wrong with straight men in wanting pussy, Riley? 
That's my question. Because we associate penises with men and vaginas with women, some people think they could never date a trans man with a vagina or a trans woman with a penis. Yeah, because it's in our sex. It's biology. Science. You know, the one that you love to follow. But I think that people are more than their genitals. <gasps> oh my god, you're so morally superior. I'm so glad that you're really judging others based on those uh, attributes. Mm -hmm. And then judging other people for judging other people for those attributes. <laughs> I think that you could feel attraction to someone without knowing what's between their legs. And if you were to say that you're only attracted to people with vaginas or people with penises, it really feels like you're reducing people just to their genitals. Okay, what you were describing here is two different forms of attraction. There's platonic attraction versus sexual attraction. You can be attracted to anybody on the planet, male or female, black or white, whatever, disabled, abled, whatever, um, based on their personality, based on their ideas, based on their uh, empathy and sympathy towards others, like their deeds. You know, I when I was in high school, I had an attraction to some of my girlfriends because of the sound of their voice or there was attraction towards men because they were cuter. Uh, I had an attraction to one girl who was really, really smart. I mean, like. Those things are attractions that not necessarily mean it's a sexual urge for me to, you know, do the nasty with them. But on the other side of it, you have a sexual attraction, which is based on our biology, our human nature to the drive to reproduce with a, with a viable partner. So straight men are attracted to women. Women are attracted to men. Uh, in the gay community, the LGBT community, we are attracted to the same sex. Now, obviously, you know, because of uh, barriers that stop that, our sexual drives are not going to produce children because we have two of the same parts and we need the parts of the other sex in order to make a baby. The sexual attraction is just, it's the biological makeup of the human race to reproduce. We need to uh, continue our gene pool, uh, continue our bloodline. And so that's what happens when it comes to sexual attraction. It's just the drive, Riley. Like what you were describing is two different things. You can love the personality of someone, be they the same sex as you or not, but sexual attraction is who you want to fuck and who you might possibly want to have children and a family with. Jesus Christ. You're kind of objectifying them, but you're thinking of them more as genitals than objects. So I guess you're kind of genitalifying them? That's not a word. Try again. Anyway, my point is we have implicit biases that we were raised with or that we developed over time and they can be hard to get rid of. Yeah, it's called human nature. It's called tribalism. It's called othering. So imagine two tribes on an island, okay, on the west coast and the east coast. One is a white tribe. The other is a black tribe. All right, depending on the environmental influences, there's more sun on this coast versus this coast. Whatever, they're darker, they're lighter, who cares? So if you were to go traveling on this island and come across somebody who looks different than you based on their racial colors, based on their facial structures, based on their traditions, their culture, like as you start learning about other people that are different from you, you will start opening up your worldview. However, when you are associated with the same people who look like you, you tend to have a preference towards that. It is a preference. It's called tribalism. Like, look it up. Like attracts to like, okay? People who are, think in the same manner, who act in the same manner, who speak in the same manner, uh, they will be attracted to like, and that is okay. It's okay, Riley, but we have some people, certain individuals who like new things, who like change, who step outside of those uh, those natural tendencies to to try something new. Like for me, I wasn't exposed to black people or black culture well until I was in college. I know, college. But I've had great relationships with uh, brown people, black people, Asian people, like every type of person out there I've been involved with. Like I'm, I'm kind of a slut, <laughs> or at least I used to be a slut. Why would anybody pursue a relationship or partnership with someone that they have no attraction to. If you don't find anything in common or something that 
that triggers you to move in that direction, why are you wasting your time? And I think this can be especially prominent within the queer community. Gay men often pride themselves on being disgusted by vaginas, and the same goes for lesbian women with penises. And they have that right. Are you shaming gay people now? It's difficult because some queer people have built their sexual identities on these repulsions, but I don't think they're innate at all. Some people don't like fish tacos. Get over it. If you met someone who was extremely attractive, had a great personality, but didn't have the genitals that you wanted, you might be surprised to find that it isn't a deal breaker. As someone who is trans and gay, trans trender, don't lie to us. Sometimes people ask me with a very accusatory tone if I would date a girl with a penis. Because there's this stereotype that trans lesbians are just predatory cis men creeping on cis women. But the thing is, I absolutely could be attracted to a woman with a penis. And I'm so happy for you. Go live your life over there, being accepting of others. You are judging people that you don't even know, for fuck's sakes. I could be attracted to any woman, cis or trans. If I find you attractive, I don't care what you have down there. I'm so happy for you. I prefer penis over pussy. What are you gonna do? Shame a bye guy? But we know that sexual orientations are more innate than learned. They're more nature and less nurture. Gay conversion therapy has been proven not to work. Yeah, no shit. Do you even hear yourself at this point? I'm pretty sure that this is a, uh, a leeway into discussions over the vice president-elect uh, Pence and uh, the liberals and SJWs blowing things out of proportion, thinking that he's going to bring conversion therapy onto American gays. No, he fucking won't. You people are blowing things out of proportions, very much like how that uh, video with Trump grab him by the pussy thing. You guys took that out of context, blew it out of proportions, and said that he promoted sexual assault, which he didn't. Go watch the video. Okay, there was electric shock therapy. There was chemical castration on men, okay? Most of this was on men, but I'm sure it happened a few times to women. So a lot of this had religious backgrounds where it was against uh, God, against heaven, uh, to practice sodomy okay so it was in the bible a lot of that was pushed by religious fanatics and now we live in a more secularized world where everybody is stepping away from religion or those who are still religious are redefining their uh, devotion to whatever god they follow uh whatever book they follow so they are <sighs> they are changing their viewpoints to include gay people like, because we don't do this anymore. Conversion therapy is terrible. And you fear it's going to come back again. But, you know, 2016, it is not going to happen. Calm your tits, please. But you can unlearn your own prejudices. It just takes time and conscious effort. And the way that we talk about potentially dating trans people has a lot in common with the way we discuss other preferences. Preferences. Saying that you're not attracted to fat people isn't innate. It's informed by a society that tells you that being thin is ideal. Riley, I want you to go on Google, okay, on your computer, and I want you to type in chubby chasers. And then get back to me on that one. Everything in the media you consume is bombarding you with messages that skinny is beautiful and fat is ugly. Here's the thing. There's a wide spectrum of body shapes and sizes. We have ultra skinny, skinny, normal, you know, fit, slightly overweight, chubby, fat, and obese. If you find yourself to be in the middle, this promotes healthiness. If you are skinny like me, I it's very difficult for me to gain weight because of my metabolism, surprisingly at 31 years old. I am I am still fit. I am still healthy, okay? The the extremes of this spectrum, aka ultra skinny and super obese, does not promote healthy living. Most people are not attracted to the extremes. Those who are bulimic, those who like are super skinny that you can see their bones is not attractive because there is something clearly visibly wrong with their body type. Same thing with obese people, a overly weight person who's 500 pounds and can barely walk upstairs is promoting unhealthy living. Why would you want to associate yourself with a partner? Okay. That is unhealthy, has unhealthy diets, uh, unhealthy lifestyles, and where you're going to be taking care of them for the rest of your life. A partnership means that both of you give and both of you take. The extremes, 
extreme skinny and extreme fat will be taking a lot more out of the other partner and that partner cannot give all their life to cater to them. Riley, there's a reason why we have beauty standards and most of those beauty standards from average to skinny, you know, or average to fit is still within the realm of healthiness. We are attracted to healthy bodies and healthy bodies with healthy minds and gorgeous looks is a fucking 11 out of 10 people. And I want to date that person. And even the nicest of people absorb these messages to some degree. But again, if you find someone attractive and really enjoy spending time with them, there's no reason why their weight should be a factor. Yes, it is. Especially if they have heart disease, weak knees, uh, fucking cholesterol problems, diabetes. They create more problems than what is necessary. And that's a lot of baggage for one person let alone two. Especially since we know that the relationship between weight and health is extremely complex and you really can't make any moral judgments on a person based on their weight. Oh, I see, but you're outside of moral judgment, aren't you? You, judging others for having a preference. Go fuck yourself. And lastly, let's talk about disabled people. Disabilities come in a very wide range from being deaf to being in a wheelchair to only having one arm. To mental illness, such as being a trans trender, thinking that you talk about all trans people's rights and uh, issues. You mean like that? And I think it's pretty ridiculous to say that you couldn't be attracted to any person who has any of those disabilities. <sighs> being disabled usually involves people born a certain way that was out of their control. Okay, it's unfortunate, but hey, life is unfair. You deal with the hand you're dealt, Riley. Some of us are more physically fit and marathon runners, while some of us are geeks and like to just read books. That person's gonna be more physically active and possibly more physically attractive than the geek. But hey, there are people who prefer geeks versus the athletic people. Guess what? It's called preference. Disabilities can happen to anyone. Someone you're extremely attracted to today could become disabled tomorrow. And that shouldn't make your attraction to them disappear. Yeah, what, what, do you think everybody loses attractions on the drop of a dime? Hmm? So this really hot guy, let's say Zac Efron, gets hit by a bus and he loses the ability to use his legs. He is now crippled. Do you honestly think that Day one, you will find people will be like, oh my God, Zac Efron, I like want to jump his bones because he's so hot. And then the next day when he's disabled, they're going to be like, oh my God, he's so ugly. I wouldn't fuck that. Like, no, it's not the drop of a dime, Riley. Jesus Christ. So if it does, it might not be because of them, but rather because you have some preconceived ideas about disabled people that are just inaccurate and harmful. Jesus Christ, you don't speak for millions of people, Riley. You are standing there on your soapbox, waving your fucking book on feminism, and judging others who are walking by. And do you know what sane people do? The ones that are walking by? They ignore you. Unsurprisingly, this is another case of the media telling you that a certain group isn't attractive. Disabled people are rarely romantic leads. Their stories and movies and TV shows are often tragic, but that doesn't reflect the reality that disabled people can be happy and have dating lives and be attractive. And do you know why that is? Because Hollywood goes with majority audience members. You are going to make entertainment that caters to the majority of your audience. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's a fact. Like. There are less disabled people in the world than there are, you know, normal people. Again, I'm not saying that disabled people are not normal. All I'm saying is that it's the norm for the majority of our population to be physically fit and somewhat attractive. Saying that, uh, so therefore we don't get a lot of uh, entertainment or Hollywood blockbusters about disabled people. Besides, it's just, say a wheelchair bound young person is wheelchair bound okay and he can't jump off of buildings because he's in a wheelchair so you can't really make a movie that would work based on the physics alone people who are disabled are limited in the uh access to what you know fit people will do for instance batman batman can't save the day and kick joker's ass if he's in a wheelchair now if you're not attracted to someone you're not attracted to them i'm not going to tell you that you have to be attracted to this fat person or that trans person or that disabled person but you kind of are you kind of are by telling us 
that we're bad people for not having a preference to these types of people. You are essentially thinking that everybody has to be loved and everybody has to get laid by like by most people. You know, you're trying to fight these um, beauty standards which humanity has created for itself just based on like biology. It's just inside of us to find this attraction to healthy bodies, to capable bodies, to people who are smart, people who are gorgeous, people who are fit. Like it's just our natural tendency. And you're telling millions of people right now to ignore that natural tendency. Jesus fucking Christ. But the more you work at unlearning your own prejudices, the more you'll be able to see people from these groups as people rather than tired stereotypes. Oh my God, like your stereotypes about cisgender people or your stereotypes about straight white men being assholes or your stereotypes about women being minorities and how they're weak. Jesus Christ, you are doing the exact same thing. Unlearning our own biases doesn't happen overnight and I don't have a step-by-step -step instruction guide for you. I'm so glad because if you did, I would not buy that. It would sit on the shelf collecting dust. I can guarantee you that for you. But I think if you can accept that these prejudices exist in all of us, even you, you can identify them when they come up and work to change how you think about them. And be mental, just like Riley, because he's always, sorry, she is always thinking about these things at a cost of daily basis and feeling bad for themselves and shaming others for their own fucking preferences. Go outside and live a life. It will most likely be a long, slow process, but I think it's worth it. Because these dating preferences. Preferences. Dude, stop putting quotation marks on preferences. They are what they are. Are ultimately harmful to people who don't fit into your box of what a conventionally attractive person looks like. It makes people feel isolated, alone, and unwanted to hear that they're universally unattractive to people. And I'm sorry for that. I really am. But your feelings are not my responsibility. My feelings are my own responsibility and I need to follow my feelings. If I have an attraction to, let's say, a white man versus a black man, I would want to be happy in my life and I would find I'm, I'm going to probably find better happiness going with the white guy. But again, I've had black dick really good actually. If I happen to find someone, be they male or female, who I am attracted to and they are attracted to me and we fit well, then everything's a-okay. I think that you're just upset when people deny you and refuse to have sex with you. But a lot of that is not because you're unattractive. It's your ideas, Riley. You are an insane person and nobody wants an insane person as a partner. I don't think there's anyone out there who somebody doesn't find attractive. We're sold this image of the conventionally attractive person, but in reality, all kinds of people around the world are constantly dating, having sex, finding people attractive, getting married. It's not only the conventionally attractive who find love or have sex. Yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but somehow you thinking that other people who follow this, their preferences, based on what they find attractive is not good enough for you. Stop speaking for others and being all morally superior. Stop being your virtue signaling. That's what you're doing. I get it now. You're a virtue signaler. Go fuck yourself. By working on ourselves to dispel that idea, we can make the world a more welcoming and loving place for everybody, no matter how they look. And we can all hold hands around the campfire and sing Kumbaya and talk about the good old days. This is, this is a perfect utopia world and it's never gonna happen. This video is a part of my Feminism with Riley series that I'm doing in collaboration with Everyday Feminism, a website dedicated to helping you stand up to and break down everyday oppression. I'm glad when you use me, Everyday Oppression, as part of your videos because it allows me to respond to your videos. Thank you. Well... There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I got through another Riley video. Just, just look, look at these. Out of, t out of these views, there is over 5,000 dislikes. 5,000. Riley, take a good hard look at your content and realize why you're getting a lot of dislikes is because you are talking as if you are part of a cult, okay? You are shaming people for preferences, for for their attractions to other people that is personal. You are, you're wagging your finger at them. That's, don't you dare. You need to fuck a trans person. 
fuck a trans person or you're a bad person. Like, no wonder people make fun of the left. No wonder people make fun of SJWs and, yes, feminists like you. I know that not all of them are stupid like you, but this is what we are presented with. So it's your fault. All right, guys, you remember to take care of one another. I just, I don't know. There's not enough booze for this, so. You all take care. <laughs>